Polls have opened in Liberia and a runoff to elect a new president. The contest is between 51-year-old George Via, former international football star and Liberian senator, and 73-year-old Joseph Wakai, who has served as Liberia's vice president for the past 12 years and the former president Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. The Congress for Democratic Change, CDC's We Are, came first with 38.8% of votes cast during the first round of elections on October 10. His rival, the Unity Party's Boakai, had 28.8%. The runoff was necessary because both candidates couldn't secure the needed 50% to win outright. A total of 5,390 polling stations across the country opened their doors. For 2.1 million registered voters at 800 GMT, polls are expected to close at 1,800 GMT. The two candidates have promised to revive Liberia's economy. Let's head to Liberia now. We've got Roland Johnson with some updates of the election runoff, uh, which has been going on for about four hours now. Thank you so much for joining us, Roland. How is Liberia? Uh, Liberia is cool and calm. Great. Uh, so far, what have you been picking up uh, on the ground? How are polls going? Do we have a lot of people turning up considering uh, that this a day after Christmas, even though it's not a holiday in Liberia? Really, the attendance for this election is very poor. People are going one one to the pool center to go and cast their vote. All right. Now, uh, let's, let's talk about what... Uh, the polls are saying in terms of who's likely to win this election. We know uh, that Mr. Boakai, for example, doesn't have the support of his former boss. That's been reported largely. And a lot of people are tipping uh, former footballer George Weah to win uh, this election. But really, what are the polls telling us? Uh, the polls, they are, they are not telling us anything much because right now, even though majority or almost all of the youth are for... George Weah, but we see Metro and old people going to the pool this morning. We hardly found them going to the pool. Really, I don't know if it's due to the celebration for Christmas yesterday or they are waiting for later on in the day. We don't really know. But actually, those who are going to the pool from this morning even till now are Metro people, older people. Mm. All right, let us talk about the security uh, situation, uh, knowing very well, unfortunately, the past uh, uh, of Liberia. What was the security situation like there now? Really, the security situation, is ev everything is on course. There is no violence, no, no sound of argument, no fighting. People are just in a calm atmosphere right now going to the pool. Mm. The security are all in post. Okay. And uh, what's it like now? What are you really seeing on TV in Liberia? I'm just wondering, it's a holiday and you also have this e election runoff. Really on TV now, they got talk show, people are calling, giving their views on how the election is going, why, why is it there will be poor tenor or why people are just giving their view right now, even on radio. They are also calling, giving their view concerning the poor turnout for this election. Mm, Roland, finally, before you go, you're talking about poor turnout, but have you voted yourself? Yes, I voted since this morning, 7 p.m., 7 a.m., I mean, I, I, I voted. All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Roland Johnson there, he's a Liberian citizen, giving us some updates on the Liberian election runoff. We sure will bring you uh, more updates in subsequent bulletins. Meanwhile, Ghana's former president, John Dramani Mahama, who is heading an ECOWAS observer mission uh, to Liberia, has appealed for peace. He called on political actors to play by the rules and conduct themselves responsibly. He further encouraged them to seek redress through legal and constitutional means in the case of dispute. Now, away from the Liberian elections, Christmas is generally seen as a season filled with lots of merrymaking and people showing a lot of love to their fellow men. Unfortunately, not all tend to enjoy themselves during Christmas. For the Achampong family at Inken Kansu in the Ashanti region, for instance, the season over the years has been all but pleasant. John Jesus Mahmoud Mohammed Nudin visited Yahweh Champong at his home and reports Christmas is just a stark reminder of how tough life is for them. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about a family of 10 who used 50 Ghana cities to celebrate Christmas. Yes, 50 Ghana cities. Are you surprised? Yes, 
50 Ghana cities to celebrate Christmas. Mr. Champom and his eight children and the wife needed just 50 Ghana cities to celebrate last year's Christmas. And what they needed to do was to sell part of their farm produce so that they would be able to use the 50 Ghana cities for other ingredient. A champon's family is made up of subsistence farmers with low income in the face of high utility and other bills. He pours his heart out to God, letting his maker know how he feels because he could not provide for his family the kind of Christmas he would want them to have. <laughs> If there is money, my children, like many other children, would have loved to have rice plus other things during this time. But I cannot afford all these things. So we normally rely on fufu. The father of eight always assembles his children each year to give them an idea what to expect for Christmas. George is one of Achampo's sons. Life is really hard, you know. In fact, I feel embarrassed if I want to join my friends to any event because they won't respect you, especially when you don't dress like them. I am always indoors with my siblings during such instances until everything is done. Last year, Mr. Champon managed to raise 50 Ghana cities to buy a fowl to go with some food items for the children. Last year, Last year, I didn't have a fowl, so we bought one and prepared some Ghana soup. I bought that fowl at 30 cities from the sale of the farm produce. In all, we spent about 50 cities during last year's festive season. Last year, I can't. No man can get a year in your end, a coin, five hundred thousand. His estimate for this year is one hundred and fifty Ghana cities, but he has no clue where the money will come from. That is, if it will come at all. In the midst of all the deprivation, he finds himself no failures because, according to him, the family exists in a material world which will pass. Mr. Champon says worries about not having flamboyant Christmas can best be taken care of by the Creator. I don't know because I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I don't have regrets just because it is part of life. It isn't everybody that will have it easy in life. I keep encouraging my family to always learn to live a good life. Probably their lives will be better than mine. The 56-year-old says worrying does not change anything and it is not glorifying to the Lord. He won't focus on circumstances to be easily become fearful. Fear, he says, invites the enemy to paint an ugly gloomy picture of their lives. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin reporting. The joy of being able to extend a helping hand to someone in need, giving them the urge to hold on to their dreams, is enough motivation for young Dennis Asamoah. But for him, the deaf in his community would remain excluded members of the society. Unhappy about the situation, he engages a number of these disabled persons in his neighborhood daily at his shop just to help them understand the way of the hearing public, to enable them to live in harmony. He's been telling us more in this report as he calls for more support and fairness for persons, for deaf persons in the society. The motivation for what I do, I always remember one thing, that if you help someone, 
God will have mercy on you. Yeah, that's the main secret in my life. That I am always ready to help someone. And who should I help? So when I get in contact with them, I was just like, okay, here is a good place to rest. Then I can help some of them. What kind of help do you need and from whom? I need a lot of help. And from anyone who is ready to help. Like, sometimes when it comes to financial issues, like establishing goals for them, I find it very difficult. It takes time. Like this uh, barbering shop I'm talking of, it's been six months now, still having completed. But still, I read that some organization can come and support Dennis. So that if Dennis can lead those people to find work, their life can be easy and successful. And they are the fruit of their education. I might ask everyone to come because when you go to the, the deaf school, we have teachers who don't know sign language. And how can a teacher who is not good with sign language teach a deaf person? When a deaf person finishes uh, SHS, he can't, be, uh, he can't become a nurse or a doctor. He, he's only tied to hard work, mason, carpentry. When a deaf person completes SS, SHS, he can't become a lawyer in Ghana here. He's only entitled to teaching. So I'm, I'm just asking if the government or the Ministry of Education per se can come in and see to that. Dennis narrows down his appeal to members of the community in which they live in. He does not want the hearing impaired to be discriminated against and stigmatized. Sometimes they don't respect the deaf. Sometimes the hearing, most of them doesn't respect deaf. It's, it's very big challenge. This is how it happens. When the, when the hearing sees a deaf person, for the meantime, maybe I don't know you are a deaf person. So when I get close to you and I know that you are a deaf, I feel like, hey, now we're in sway. You see, when a new customer comes even here, a new customer comes here, they are like, Hey, then we don't go for movie here. You see, so like the respect or the the the, 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 the hearing is uh, happy with the communication barrier. Still, they like to maintain it. But I would like everyone to come on board and know that we are all one. Well, some 200 children in Afyinya celebrated Christmas in grand style. Ketsi, the Let a Child Smile project. The project, an initiative of gospel musician Perpetual Chai, annually seeks to make Christmas meaningful to the less privileged. The children were treated to good food and drinks provided. Uh, they were also provided with clothing and also had their eyes screened. Francado was there with the children and reports. The Let a Child Smile project was instituted four years ago. It offers the less privileged in society the opportunity to also enjoy Christmas. Mrs. Perpetual Chai is the organizer of the event. On every 25th of December, what we do is that we have a program called Let a Child Smile. Now, this program is to put smiles on the faces of the less privileged children. Now, this year, we've been doing this for almost four years now. This year, what we want, we, we're doing is that we're registering our kids on the NHIS for free. And we are having ice cream as well. It's at Afienya cluster of schools where we are standing as of now. We believe that the children are our future leaders. Therefore, it is necessary that we take good care of the kids as they are growing up. How about the adults? Um, I find it's a way one down, maybe. So we, 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 are, we have... Um, the concern is more on the children so that we can have the kids growing up and then look at what they need and they need as well so that we could be able we could be able to help them in any way that we could so basically let a child smile is all about kids and putting smiles on their faces on christmas day so basically that is what we do yes. we are even planning to go to other villages because sometimes we feel that the villages need the, the, the things more but trust me we are in greater accra but if you go back a little you realize that there are people who also need other items so basically we want to look at all the communities around and after that go into the villages as well so children who benefited from the project and their parents could not hide their joy i'm going to use it because i'm not going to pay any money for going to the hospital the next time i'm, I'm very excited because it has even saved my time because i need to now go 
for for uh, I need to board car and go somewhere and now go and join a long queue. After that, pay for it. But over here, I came here this morning and I was able to renew my health insurance without boarding any car or joining a long queue. I'm really excited because many people here came here because of their health insurance. Some can't afford the money, so they came here to do their health insurance. So I'm happy that I have one since my mom and dad can't afford to do mine for me. The registration, at times, you go there, you, you can't get it. But as we came here, most of them have been registered and they got their card. So I think it's, it's, it's good. You go to the health center, without the card, they will you pay money. But with the card, at least, you pay something little. Um, I think every child must get it and then uh, get registered so that they will go to hospital free of charge. Okay. <laughs> You're watching the Boxing Day edition of Joe News. Today we'll take a quick breather. We'll be back with more. Please don't go away. Thanks for staying on Joe News. Today the Food and Drugs Authority, FDA, has warned that it will deal ruthlessly with practitioners of herbal medicine who fail to register with them. The registration of these products, according to the FDA, will ensure that the products are of good quality and safe for use. Upper West Regional Office of the FDA, Gordon Akrugu, said those who flout the rule will be made to face the full rigors of the law. Rafiq Salam has more. The Food and Drugs Authority is mandated by law to regulate the manufacture, importation, exportation, distribution, use and advertisement of food, drugs, cosmetics, medical devices, and household chemicals with respect to ensuring their safety, quality, and efficacy. In exercising this mandate, the FDA ensures the safety, efficacy, and wholesomeness of food and drugs taken by the public. Herbal medicine is therefore not an exception. It is therefore based on the above reason that the Apparatus Office of the FDA organized a day sensitization workshop for herbal medicine practitioners. Gordon Akrugu is the Upper West Officer of the FDA. If you look at BC 3,000 years ago, herbal medicine was in existence. If you go to China, India, America, Germany, herbal medicine is there. And then WHO, World Health Organization, even recognized the practice of herbal medicine. And at the moment, herbal medicine is about being put into health, our main health stream to become part of health, uh, like health, uh, medicine at the health facilities in the country. And all this in FDA is uh, to ensure that the product that will be registered are put into practice or put into use at our health facility. We think that bringing them together to train them will help them gain knowledge, will gain knowledge from them, and then their products will be registered. Gordon Akurgo added that the exercise is to ensure that the food and drugs taken by the public during the Yuletide are not counterfeit or substandard. If we think that training is a knowledge gain, it's a no, it continue learning. So we think that if they, 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 they come for us to go through GMPs, good manufacturing practices, packaging, labeling, and quality management of their product, I think they will be in a better place to gain in the market. Sadness bring their products here. We think our products will also go to the south. So that's one of the things. So those who have not part, participated in the training, they, will, they themselves will fall out of the market because they can't compete with the people who are here and the people who are the people in upper west or the whole country might not buy their product because it might look substandard to the country and by fda we do something called post market surveillance so through our post market surveillance we'll fetch them out and they'll face full records of the law dr razak of Asida herbal clinic and a member of upper west herbal medicine association commended the fda for organizing the workshop adding that it will help not only improve the quality of their drugs but remove quacks from the system. Some of us think that we inherited herbal medicine from our grandfathers, and due to that, we don't need any form of training. 
food. Apart from the benefit of improving the quality of our products, it also gives us opportunity to unite. We are supporting the FDA after the training to go after those quacks who are spoiling the business for us. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. Mr. In the Upper West Region, newly sworn in Upper West Region Chairman of the Ghana Journalist Association, Suala Abdul Wahab, has blamed the poor membership of the DJ in the region to the autocratic attitude of the national office. The region currently has over 60 media practitioners, but only a few are in good standing as far as the activities of the association is concerned. Suala Abdul Wahab made the statement at a ceremony to swear new regional executives of the GJA at WA. Swala Abdul Wahab of the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation and Prosper Koso of the Ghana News Agency were elected during the recently held Ghana Journalist Association election. The deal went unopposed after close of nomination and only joined six other members of the association in the region who are in good standing on polling day to vote to elect national executives for the association. Supervising White High Court Judge Justice Chris Boche swore them into office. It may be specially permitted by law. By law. So help me God. So help me God. In a speech read on behalf of his colleague after being sworn into office, Upper West Region's chairman of the Ghana Journalist Association, Swala Abdul Wahab, said he had mixed feeling while being sworn into office. We have a number of eight members who are in good standing but that is not the total number of members that we have in the region why is it that only eight people are in good standing for me personally i have a problem with the the national office manages the membership of the association the regions are not largely involved to be able to know the total number of journalists that are in the region and this 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 makes it very difficult for regional executives to be able to have a full control of the association at the regional level so we are calling for an innovation so that we will be able to encourage a lot more a lot more people to join the association and those who are already members will take keen interest in the activities of the association. Supervising White High Court Judge Justice Kwesi Bwache expressed concern on the increasing crime rate in the region, especially among the youth, and called on the media to take a serious look at it. Of late, we have had incidents of criminal activities rising, criminal activities, robbery, stealing, sometimes even shooting. We will need your support. There are some of these things, if you don't bring them, I know some of you are investigative journalists. Go behind the scenes, help the security agencies in the region. We also be. I'm not saying that is it a, not every case that you bring that will also, but we will do the way. It starts with the report, and some of you can help. You have sexual offenses, uh, child abuse, and all those things. You will know them as you go along. Please don't keep hiding them. Put them up, and then we won't know what we can do. Former Upper West Region Chairman of the GJA, Bajin Dogapobia, advised members of the association to go back to school, not to add value to themselves and their profession. You, you need some tickets to really show that you have gone at this level or that level. You, you can do good, but without the certificate, Master. Somebody from school will come, you teach the person, and then the person is your head. So try and go to school. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. Now, Ghana's former Vice President, Kwesi Emisa Arthur, says the Kofodo government could have, done, could have done better in his first 11 months. He was speaking after donating some items to the whole government hospital. Oh, they could have done much better. I, don't I'm not better. I think that um, that's what we are, we are hoping for in the, in the coming year. Um, if we, to, uh, this 
resolve. So I think that programs have been adopted, implemented without a full a full conceptualization of this of the application project of the cost. And that is and so like we are moving um, and then resolving as we go. A lot of these programs should have been hosted agreed and implemented from from the one rather than let's start and and uh, model way through. And I think there's been a lot of modeling way through the implementation, especially this, the free SHS is, is, is a problem, and, uh, something that will help all of us cheap in. You're watching Draw News today with me, Venice Abubed. We'll take a quick breather. When we come back, we'll bring you business news plus more.